report to the distinguished ambassador of Belgium on speaking on behalf of the EU. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I'm speaking on behalf of the European Union, the candidate countries Turkey, Croatia, and the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, the countries of the stabilization and association process, and potential candidates Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, Serbia, as well as Ukraine, and the Republic of Moldova align themselves with this declaration. Madam President, the EU remains concerned about the humanitarian and human rights situation in the occupied Palestinian territory. Escalations of violence have led to numerous victims and continue to lead to violation of the human rights. We call upon all parties to respect international humanitarian and human rights law, combat impunity, and focus on the principle of accountability. All parties have responsibilities as regards preventing, investigating, and remedying human rights violations to respect previous agreements and coordinate steps towards maintaining peace in the region. The human rights and humanitarian situation in Gaza is of particular concern. The EU welcomes the recent measures announced by the government of Israel as an important step forward. The EU calls for their full implementation and complementary measures in order to achieve a fundamental change of policy that allows for the reconstruction and economic recovery of Gaza. The EU has offered its assistance for achieving this objective and is working with the parties concerned on this issue. The EU reiterates its goal for the immediate, sustained and unconditional opening of crossings for the flow of humanitarian aid, commercial goods and persons to and from Gaza as well as the full implementation of the 2005 Agreement on Movement and Access. The EU strongly welcomes the launch of direct negotiations between Israel and the Palestinian Authority announced in Washington on the 2nd of September and commends the Israelis, the Palestinians and the United States as well as the Quartet and Arab partners for their efforts. The decision by the parties to engage in substantive talks represents a major step on the road towards a just, lasting and comprehensive peace in the region. These negotiations on all final status issues should lead to a two-state solution with the State of Israel and an independent, democratic, contiguous and viable State of Palestine living side by side in peace and security. The EU will spare no effort along with its partners in the Quartet and Arab partners to support the EU's led efforts for successful negotiations that lead to a framework agreement within one year. The EU encourages both parties to show restraint and refrain from actions that could negatively affect the progress of the negotiations. It calls on both parties to uphold previous commitments and to strive to create an environment conducive to a successful outcome. The EU recalls that settlements are illegal under international law. We note that the moratorium instituted by the government of Israel last November has had a positive impact and we urge for its continuation. The EU continues to call for a complete stop to all violence in particular rockets, fire, and terrorist attacks. All parties must ensure the protection of civilians and the respect of international humanitarian and human rights law. The, the EU reiterates its call on those holding the abducted Israeli soldier, Gilad Shalit, to release him without delay. The EU takes note with concern of alleged attempts to limit the freedom of expression of civil society organizations and human rights defenders exercising their legitimate, legitimate right to protestation in a non-violent manner. We wish to recall to all parties that by challenging injustice and raising awareness about human rights, human rights defenders are essential to bringing about positive and lasting change in society. Civil society and a free press 
are an essential part of each democratic society. Madam President, the EU remains strongly committed to work alongside the parties concerned to bring an end to violations of international law. This Council has the responsibility to address all human rights situations. We are confident that the Council will be able to send out a clear and united message to the international community, not least the victims of human rights violations in the region. To this end, the Council should engage in a constructive dialogue with all parties and take a balanced approach. I thank you, Madam President. I thank you.